Hello and welcome to Jazz Tonight. I'm Michael Jacoby, executive producer of Jazz on the Plaza and host of Raising the Standards on KSCO Radio in Santa Cruz. Delighted you're with us and also further delighted to welcome an old friend of mine who hates when I say this, but who is my very favorite jazz singer on the planet, the wonderful Paula West. I don't hate when you say that, but you call me old. <laughs> That's a part How are that. you, buddy? <laughs> okay. That's We've all right. known each other a while. I know. I was only 10, though. That's right. And I <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, We've known each other over 25 years it's, when I was it's in It's in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I, I don't think I, at the time I was between radio gigs and you were working... Uh, for Townsend, uh, the cafe. I was slinging hash, you as my dad would hash. say. And our mutual friend, Craig Maxwell, mm -hmm. introduced us, who, mm -hmm. whom I haven't seen for years. Well, Paula is in town uh, for Jazz on the Plaza, and uh, as always, the disclaimer, by the time you see this, uh, she'll be long gone. But if, you were, if you're here tonight, or as uh, looking back, we're there that night, you, were, uh, you had a special time, I'm sure. So what's up? You. Uh, you survived with the rest of us. Yes. Yeah, it's been, oh gosh, it's been since 2019 yes. that I was here. Indeed. And I'm missing it. I've often said, I don't know what seems longer, the 17 years that we did this or the two years we didn't. Uh, seems like a long time. It, it does. And still kind of trying to get back into a regular, you know, a regular, uh, program of, yeah. of what we do with our lives you know you still have yeah. to get used to certain things and has this health standard thing changed this mandate or what well it, it's it's interesting and you were saying that you had it I had, had it, it in relatively early Jan no of January had, just this, oh, this year, year was a, uh, because I went to two holiday dinners they weren't big yeah. and then just about everybody yeah. got it uh, well I would have one Christmas Eve and Christmas Day yeah. and then it Filling symptoms yeah. in that first week. Well, uh, going through two years of it was enough, so we're not going to talk COVID today. No, but it's a good way to get out of something. It's a what? It's a good way to get out of something you don't want to do. I just a, oh, came. Out. Yeah, I used that. <laughs> that's, do you, have you used it? <laughs> oh, I've used that. Oh, I haven't used you know, that yet. You know, I just tested, and I'm not. Yeah, sure. yeah. So not not to really dwell on COVID, but what's interesting and certainly challenging as well as daunting for live artists is. Uh, what you had to go through. And I preface this by saying, Jazz on the Plaza did a couple of years of virtual concerts, which, you know, uh, they can be okay. A lot of them were from uh, sitting on the couch at somebody's mm -hmm. house. But what you did was really remarkable. Tell me how that concert that you did came together. Well, we were fortunate enough to have the designer, Ken Folk, he's world known lend us the beautiful space at uh, St. Joseph's Art Society. And that's you know, an old church, right? Yes, okay. yes, and he bought it, it's a private club thing. It's really, it's just, it's huge. Yeah. And we had enough uh, room to separate responsibil yeah. responsibly and all of that. And uh, it went really well. We had like close to 800 people watch it at yeah. that one time, which is good for a virtual yeah. performance. And, and you did very well on that. I, well, <laughs> would save my butt. Yeah. It saved my butt. And you made and more virtually than you made in a regular I, gig. Uh, well, like for a few months. Yeah. It yeah. was like, was you great. know, yeah. yeah. And, and what you did that was interesting, as you say, it was, it was laid out beautifully. You were able to get far enough apart. But you were able to put on at least a semblance. Well, first of all, it had marvelous sounds. But you had switchers on the cameras, and it was great production value yeah. so it was really special the company did a really nice job can, can folks watch that on youtube i think they can watch it on my website don't ask me what okay. they do but they can still see that i know there's a version of like a rolling stone on youtube from that concert if uh, okay. if you google it we're going to talk okay. about that in a little while uh all the uh all the times we've chatted, and it's been dozens of times, whether it be on the radio or, or here on television at KCAT, um, where'd you grow up? I grew up in San Diego, okay. born and raised in San Diego, and I moved up here, up to San Francisco in November of 88, so I got, the big, got mm -hmm. the big earthquake. 
Oh, you that was your uh, welcoming. I, I, a year later, a year yeah. Later, yeah, yeah, but I was like I was working in a restaurant and it was the World Series was getting yeah, started. Right. So yeah. we knew it wasn't gonna be busy. The the cooks have got the you the know, the on, television yeah. on and everything and all of a sudden it started a little bit after five and being a native Californian, I was the only one that stayed in. You sort of stay inside, you're not supposed to run out. Right. But I was like, Oh my gosh, this is serious yeah. and had to walk all the way home from south of market to Knob Hill. Buses, nothing was well, running. I, well, it's funny because we got um, hit pretty good in Los Gatos, and mm -hmm. I was on my way, 89. Uh, my wife and I were on our way to Mendocino with another couple, and the first reports were amazing. It was the Bay Bridge has collapsed. I oh, went, yeah, Wait they, a it minute. was very, <laughs> dra it was very high drama yeah. what, yeah, what was, was going around. Stuff. Now, uh, tell me about your growing up with your folks. Your folks, was there music in the house when you were Well, kid? we all grew up playing instruments. So okay. I played clarinet growing up. And I think that really helped me with my breath control yeah. thing and uh, phrasing. Uh, so I played clarinet until early high school because it wasn't cool anymore. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to be a band nerd. Yeah. And hey, you know what? I, I regret it though because. <laughs> you didn't play the cello in the marching band or anything. No. Well, that was Woody Allen. He, well, Do you what, ever play the cello in the marching band? No, really, keep, I did not know. You have to keep picking up his chair and walking. Are you, oh, that's a joke that <laughs> yeah. he did then, yeah. Yeah, because he played clarinet yeah, also, yeah. of course. Um, I still love his movies. Okay. So do I, yeah. So, so uh, how many other siblings? I have a brother and uh, two brothers and one sister. And and what, we, did, what did they play? Well, my younger brother came like 10 years later, yeah. so he didn't play an instrument. But my older brother played trumpet and tuba, okay. and um, my sister played clarinet. Okay. And your folks play? No, <laughs> no, they did not. But they had a good appreciation yeah. of music. Yeah. I think I don't want to, you know, sound like it's not as good as it used to be. I don't want to get into that. But well, no, I, I think you like should because I think that's one of the saddest things about we just had a lot the more. school systems is that there are no, you know, there's no music in school Yeah, but anymore. you think of also what we got exposed to as yeah. kids, yeah. what we got to listen to. Yeah. You know, just watching Johnny Carson yeah. or something, they had a yeah. great band, and, yeah. and a lot of us were more exposed to so-called standards, and yeah. we knew them. Yeah. People just don't... Mm. Now, in it, 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 San Diego, did, when did you, did you start singing? I mean, was this I, I, I that, started that, dabbling like maybe a year before I came up here. Okay. So it was a late start. I just kind of felt like I, I need a creative outlet. Yeah. And I never was in choir or anything like that. But I said, oh, I don't think it, I don't think my voice is offensive, uh, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I used to sing the radio all the time. Yeah. Well, r rather than ask you the, an, an obvious question that will result in the answer of Ella and Dinah, let me ask you, who are you influenced by that we wouldn't have heard of? Uh, Maxine. Uh, what was her? Sullivan. Maxine, Maxine Sullivan. Sullivan. It worked. I have no okay. idea who she is. Oh, you don't? No, I oh, have no. never heard of her. Oh, no. You got to yeah. listen. Well, okay. she she was um, alive and well for, you know, she died maybe a couple decades yeah. ago. But her voice, even really? in her 70s, there was no decay really? in her voice. Wonderful. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, but also um, Pearl Bailey. Yeah. I wish I would have been able to. I was just. But uh, Pearl Bailey would be one. And, you know. The, the people that you would always mention, and like Carmen Ellie McRae. And 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 I, I felt fortunate that I got to see Carmen McRae and Ella Fitzgerald and Sa Sarah Vaughan. I, I did perform. as well. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was producing the Palo Alto, this very short-lived Palo Alto Jazz Festival, we had Carmen and we had uh, uh, Sarah there, which was uh, pretty special, very, very obviously late in their careers. Uh, you're watching Jazz tonight, and we're delighted to be chatting with our dear old friend, Paula West. I want to take a moment to uh, uh, do a shout out and a very large thank you to the folks at the Willow Street family of restaurants. Of course, Willow Street here in Los Gatos, the Willow Street Tap Room in Willow Glen, and Main Street Burgers. They have been uh, such an integral part of the community uh, here in Los Gatos for years, ever since uh, ever since the 94 World Cup and uh, hmm. maybe the year before. And uh, you love Willow Street. I, yes. Yeah. I wish we had one. <laughs> we, you know, where I live, that'd be a little dangerous. That would be. <laughs> anyway, Willow Street is as good as it gets, and we uh, thank them for helping out with this marvelous show. We'll be back in just a second.
So we're here on the set of Jazz tonight. Jacoby with you. Uh, and, and we wanted to take a minute to thank our sponsors, the Willow Street family of restaurants, and to get to know them a bit. Now we all know them, but perhaps what you don't know, this is the uh, principal owner, Ed Rathman. Hello, Eddie. Nice good, to see you, Mike. Good to see you. It's like, uh, it's my favorite restaurant in town. <laughs> um, first of all, Willow Street, you guys are such an icon in Los Gatos. You have, uh, and such an integral part of the community. And on behalf of the community and the, the fundraising people in this town, I want to thank you publicly and in front of God and everyone, who's a big fan, by the way. <laughs> that having been said, what year did you open here? 1993. So you opened the year before the World Cup. Yeah, and it kind of put us on the map. Yeah. Really My did. God, I remember I mean, you couldn't cross the street. Behind us, of course, is Willow Street. You couldn't cross the street from Willow Street to Hannigan's. No, it was wall-to-wall uh, -wall people, and the Brazilians were wonderful. It really was one big party for three How or four How many nights. of your servers were proposed to? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing. Someone said to me once, the difference between Americans and Brazilians, when Americans get drunk, they riot. When Brazilians get drunk, they party. That's true. One Brazilian said to me, you Americans say no, no, no. Yeah, Us we, Brazilians we, say yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> so the, as you say, that kind of puts you on the map. You had uh, your original location uh, is in Willow Glen. Yeah, okay. yes. And what was your, you know, when you started Willow Glen, I guess, 91, I mean, what was the philosophy? Obviously, there was a California pizza kitchen existed. Well, what were you looking to do? You know, to be honest, that we thought we saw their success and it was inspiring. But I had come from more of a fine dining background, yeah. and I wanted to bring some of the benefits of fine dining down to a, a little bit of uh, casual dining as, uh, atmosphere. And I didn't want white tablecloths, didn't want candles, and I just wanted really good food at reasonable prices. So you run into somebody at a party, you got like 15 seconds to describe Willow Street. How do you do it? Uh, great wood-fired pizza, pasta, salads, uh, nice atmosphere, very casual dining, great service, uh, fun atmosphere. Wow, 15 seconds, that's good. Willow Street wood-fired pizza and Main Street Burgers, the Willow Street family of restaurants, and we're so thankful that they're sponsoring Jazz Tonight. And we're back to Jazz Tonight with a very special guest. This is Paula's French Bulldog, Dylan. Hello, Dylan. Shan is... Uh, mm. <laughs> Shan is holding Dylan, and uh, I'm going to very quickly tell the story because Dylan's got other appointments. But uh, <laughs> years ago, when Paula's other dog, Satchmo, who's a French bulldog as well, was here, um, and it's good to see you, was here. We had this marvelous backdrop for the show, and he apparently didn't like it and knocked it over. And uh, so, so, and I think Melissa, our producer, we still have that on tape, don't we? It was great. Shan, thank you. Yeah, good. See you later. I'm baby. gonna buy a vowel from you later, by the way. Anyway, um, great dog. He yeah. is. I got lucky twice. He did, he did. did indeed. Uh, we reference um, Bob Dylan. Um, Bob Dylan, like a Rolling Stone, which has become part of your act. Um, when, when did you decide to record it, and when did you record it? Well, I, that was when my. Uh, the former piano player is not with us anymore, uh, George Mester Hazy. Right. We were trying to work out something to do it at the Algonquin. Right. And we were in New York, and Ed Cherry, the guitarist, sitting there, and we were trying to, we almost gave up. So I got, now I, whose I, idea was it to do this? Me. Song? You're good. I just like, but I was, we just, I mean, and then it kind of, you know, worked itself. We worked our way through it, and it's been, it's probably the most popular thing that I perform. People like to hear the most. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's interesting. 1965, Dylan recorded it. Um, uh, Bruce Springsteen had a great line. He said he was with his, uh, he was in the car with his mom. And the first time he heard it, he said, it was as though someone kicked open a door to your mind. Mm. Which I thought was a marvelous yes. line. Yes. But what's interesting, it's been covered by a few people, but not really by anybody in, in the jazz genre. Uh, a lot of jazz people haven't recorded many Dylan. Uh, yeah. Nina Simone's done, yes. uh, you know, great renditions of songs. And there's, and you do Don't Think Twice. You mm -hmm. do a whole Dylan show. Don't you? I did a whole Dylan show. I'd like to do it again. Yeah. You know, maybe take it around or yeah. something. Uh, at Through SF Jazz, yeah. I did a whole D Dylan program. Yeah. 
That's which was, you know, yeah. very challenging. Did you ever meet him? No. Oh, you saw him in Santa Cruz, didn't you go? I've a never. Weeks ago? Oh, I did see yeah. him yeah. last month. Yeah. Yeah. Was he good? Well. Yeah. Okay. You know what? The band was really good. Yeah. But if you, he didn't really do his all-time yeah. great greatest hits. Yeah. You might understand <laughs> five words from a song. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I was a little disappointed. Yeah. The band sounded great and everything. I had actually seen him back in 81 or 82. That was the only other time yeah. I saw him. And it was still the same thing with addiction. Yeah. Well, we were... Uh, you're going to the Newport Jazz Festival, mm -hmm. and you and I were talking about it on my radio show the other day. And I had read, um, I had read uh, a sheet advertising the 1965 uh, Newport Jazz Festival, including Sinatra with Count Basie, Ellington was there, Miles Davis was there, and, mm. and, the, and the list goes yeah. on and on. Amazing, and the highest priced ticket was seven fifty. Isn't that, that something? That must have been a time. Isn't that something? Yeah. I met George Ween. Yeah. He came to one of my shows at the really? old Gallanquin, and I have to find it. I did pick it up because, you know, he died yeah. within the last year, and he gave me a program of one yeah. of the years. I don't remember which year it was. Paul and I do this uh, flow of consciousness when we chat, but speaking of the Algonquin, I, I think I saw you at the Algonquin. Yes, you and did. And it was such a, and unfortunately it's gone. Yeah. But it was such a weird little, because it was it was a very long, very narrow room. Yes. So there's the piano, and here's the audience, and then the audience yeah, went the, both the, ways. Yeah, the, the audience is either in your face, or yeah. it's like being in <laughs> Siberia or and something. Half of them were way down there. Yeah. It was, that's unfortunate. Do you know the first time I saw you in New York? I've seen you with Michael at the uh, Time Warner. The Firebird. Oh. Remember that? The Russian restaurant? Yes. Years ago. I was with my yeah. friend Barty Adams. Oh, wow. Guy. Yeah. That was neat. So, you just got, so what would you consider, uh, would you say you're back, if you excuse the pun, in full swing in terms of appearances? I know you're doing Feinstein's um, I could use some. I could use some bookings. Yeah. We'll sing okay. for food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, but at least, you know, most of the venues are all opened up, the ones yeah. that could survive that two years and yeah. some new things ha have taken place but yeah. yeah I'd like to get back to New York because the last time I was there actually was November of 2019 at Dizzy's. At Dizzy's. That was yeah, yeah. so it's time to go back. Now if you folks get to New York you need to go to the Jazz Center at Time Warner and one of the great rooms is what's the room called that overlooks Columbus Circle? Well, Dizzy's does, but so does uh, the Allen Room, which is yeah. called the Appel Room the now. The Appel Room, mm -hmm. that as uh, the behind the artist and behind the bandstand is full window that yeah. overlooks uh, the statue in, uh, in Columbus Circle. We saw you there with Michael Feinstein, mm. who's such a good guy. Yeah. yeah, he does a lot for the music. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, are there any, uh, for folks um, that are jazz fans, are there any new venues in, the, in California, in Northern California, that have opened? That um, someone I don't remember the isn't name. Isn't there a Yoshi's in Napa now? Isn't there? Or Yountville? No, or, there's or a there, uh, no, Blue, no, Note. Blue Note. Yeah, yeah, that was there. You know, it's and that's a nice a space. Yeah. That's a really nice space. But and there's a place in Mendocino. Oh. No, Fort Bragg. That's supposed to. Did he? Is he still open? I, I don't know. Closed. If he was, I know our buddy. That was supposed to be nice. Used to play there. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think he closed okay, up. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have how many CDs have you got? Four. Four. I know it's time. It's time. It's, it's time. time. It's been I a know. long Everybody time. You see, you you run into yeah. Uber drivers. They go, hey. Oh really? How about a new <laughs> CD, Paula? <laughs> what do you? Yeah. Do you have anything in mind that you want to do? Oh, I definitely have the repertoire. I think we did need to figure out. You know, I need to maybe organize something to get the funds for it. But I have more than enough yeah. uh, new things to put on an album. Well, you and I have have uh, have always agreed uh, that the Great American Songbook didn't end with Rogers and Hart. Absolutely not. Um, whether it's Van Dyke Parks, Bob Dylan, or uh, or Billy Joel, Jimmy Webb, Jimmy Jimmy Webb, whom I love. Yes. And you did Wichita Line. Uh -huh. Burt uh, Bacharach Bert is Bacharach, another one. Yeah. Jimmy Webb, of course. Did Jimmy Webb write? Didn't we? Mm -hmm. Which is the Sinatra did a magnificent version of it. What a what a lovely tune. 
So tell me about, okay, give me a couple ideas. When you do go back in the studio, mm -hmm. what, what would you have on a CD? Well, I've been doing um, I'm Glad There Is You. I would probably figure out a couple of other Dylan tunes to do. My favorite thing that you do. What? Ten Cents a Dance. Oh, yeah. We're going to do that one tonight. Yeah, I love that song. Yes. What is that from? Um, I don't know it's if it's a, a stand or, or if it's from a show or I not. I think it is. Okay. Yeah, they might, well, shame might on be me. from a film, but I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. I learned that one from listening to Anita O'Day. Yeah. That was the first person I was exposed to. It. And of course, when you think of Anita O'Day, you do think of Newport. Where she did oh, that that's one of the best vocal yeah. performances ever, yeah. ever, yeah. with her big hat on yeah. and everything. So you're doing um, a San Francisco jazz. And for the folks uh, in Los Gatos, if, if you've never gone up to San Francisco jazz, it is painfully hip. And uh, you have a, there's, it's a little bit like the Jazz Center in New York. That, that they were modeling it about yeah, like different that. Different venues. Mm -hmm. And the big one is 700 seats or something? 700, low 700 plus, yeah. yeah. And then there's smaller ones like. Uh, there's only the uh, Joe the, Henderson Lab. So there's only two? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you, you're scheduled to be up there? Um, I'm going to do the minor, the, the big space uh, during the holidays, okay. early. December fourth, I do, believe. Is it a holiday show? Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do. But you know what? Smart. I'm gonna, they're gonna go to swing, because yeah. I did a virtual concert during Christmas stuff. That was the first time I've ever done anything like yeah. that. But we throw in stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the holidays, but you know, it's getting to look a lot so, like uh, Kwanzaa. Uh, nah. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you just gave me an idea, maybe. It's getting to but, look a lot. Um, like <laughs> you know, we did stuff that maybe they had stars or yeah. the moon or, you know, something like that in the title. Yeah. And, the and made that yellow, work. Something like that. We did a, what was the, Lost Out Here in the Stars. Right. I did that one. Oh, what a pretty song. Yeah. yeah. And especially I Wished on a Moon. I'm going to, when I go to New York in a couple of weeks, I'm just going to hang out and stuff. and. Eric Reed's doing a night at Dizzy's and he asked me to do a song. So yeah. I'm doing I Wished on the Moon because it's a yeah. uh, tribute to Teddy Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. It's sure good to see you. Oh. I, you know, I was, <coughs> I guess I got spoiled. I was so used to seeing you every year for so long. Now. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. We haven't seen each other for yeah. a couple of years. But I never took Los Gatos for granted. No, you never have. It was always have, fun. You have never mailed in a show. You have always been. Thank uh, you. Fresh and. Uh, uh, Cutting edge and always a joy. Thank you. Good seeing you, partner. Thank you. And good seeing uh, he's, he's Dylan's looking up like, hey, mention me, will you? <laughs> anyway, that's Jazz tonight. Big thank to the Willow Street family of restaurants. And a big thank you as well to KCAT TV 15th at uh, 15. And uh, my producer, Melissa Torn, and the entire gang here. Until uh, next week, when I once again uh, present Jazz tonight, I'm Jacoby. I'll see you soon.